The bye week could not have come at a better time for the Nittany Lion football team. Penn State went through the first half of the regular season with a 3-3 three three record. Now they get ready for the second half starting at Minnesota. Minnesota is a team in transition. Tim Brewster fired as the head coach early Sunday morning. Jeff Horton takes over as the interim head coach for the rest of the way. We'll preview the game with all its twists and turns on Huddle Up, Nittany Lion fans. Presentation of Huddle Up Nittany Lion fans on your local public television station has been made possible in part by Everett Cash Mutual Insurance Company, providing insurance for farmers by farmers since 1913. ECM Insurance Group of Everett. McClanahan's Penn State Room, offering a complete assortment of Penn State gifts and apparel. Downtown State College or online anytime at PennStateRoom.com. Inspirations, Milroy, Pennsylvania, featuring Penn State Corian tables and house signs. Information at 717-667-6314. Hi again, everyone. I'm Steve Jones, and welcome to Huddle Up, Nittany Lion fans. As this week, the Nittany Lion football team begins the second half of the regular season as Penn State goes to what they call the bank in Minnesota to take on the Golden Gophers. Before we preview that game, let's get to our news and notes segment. First of all, off the top, we start with Nittany Lion basketball. Ed DeCellis' Nittany Lions have started practice for the upcoming 2010-2011 season. They did not have a senior on last year's team. This year they have five seniors on the team. Early on they have Lehi, which went to the NCAAs. Phil Martelli, St. Joe's team. Fairfield went to their conference championship game. And then later on they have games at Old Miss, Virginia Tech, and the ACC Challenge game with Maryland. All right, Penn State just went through a football bye week. The timing pretty good for Penn State, 3-3 three and three on the season. Head coach Joe Paterno now gets his team ready for the second half of the regular season. It starts out in Minnesota on Saturday, then it's Michigan in prime time, Northwestern at home, then to Columbus, Landover at FedEx Field with Indiana, and undefeated Michigan State to close out the regular season. What about the Minnesota situation? Tim Brewster on the job three and a half seasons, went 15 and 30. Early Sunday morning, athletic director Joel Materi talked to Brewster on the phone and told him he was going to be relieved of his duties. So for the final five games of the season, the interim head coach is Jeff Horton, who now has to take his program through a transition. You know, I think the kids have, have responded to that. You know, I think the best thing we can do is, is, to, is to go out and, you know, as coaches, you know, the first thing you want to do is be professional. You know, there's obviously uncertainty on the coaching staff with what will happen next year and, you know, with the new coach coming in. But we owe it to the, to the, to the kids on the team to do our job and, they, and to prepare them. You know, I don't know all the details with the Minnesota situation. Uh, and I don't want to be critical of either side. I just know, I don't even, I don't really know the athletic director. I don't know the cast of characters that would have made the decision to uh, to, to let Bruce to go. Uh, but I do know that uh, it's tougher. I don't think there's any question. And I bring in my broadcast partner of the Penn State Football Radio Network, Jack Ham. We've worked together for the last 11 seasons, and now with Jack, we go into a very unusual situation on Saturday where Penn State has to face a brand-new head coach. Uh, we just heard from Jeff Horton, and we heard from Joe Paterno. What do you expect? What kind of differences could we see in Minnesota with a new coaching staff? Well, I, I think in a philosophy why you really do not know what you're going to end up getting from an, a new head coach. You're right; it's, it's such a rarity in college football and uh, in pros. It happens so, so much, but uh, uh, the the unknown is out there. But still, it's the same personnel they've had for the first five or six games, and you didn't realize what they have. You watch them on tape. You're not going to change too much, but there'll be a couple of new wrinkles out there on the defensive side of the ball, especially that, that Penn State's going to have to be current uh, uh, concern about. So. Uh, uh, but for the most part, I think uh, what you see is what you get from this Minnesota team. Penn State, of course, is 3-3 three and three on the season. It turns out the bye week was exactly at the halfway point of the season. So how do you feel about the timing of the bye week? I, I think it's probably the, the best timing for an off, off week for Penn State. I think number, number one, coming off the game against Illinois and not playing well on both sides of the ball, 
having some of the injuries that we have on the football team, I think, to get that bye week, to get back to basics. And I think that's what Joe Paterno always does when uh, you lose a football game is you get you get back to basics. And, and uh, the off week, I think, was a good learning experience for this football team and uh, I think badly needed. We saw Trent Richardson at Alabama run for 144 yards. Adam Robinson of Iowa ran for 95 yards. And Mikel LaShore had a great running game, 117 yards against Penn State. Have you been disappointed by Penn State's run defense so far? I am surprised. Uh, one thing I thought was the constant of our of our defense was the fact that the running game, we'd be able to shut down a running game. But uh, Temple early in the game was able to run the football against us. Uh, obviously, Alabama did as well. But Illinois came out there and just, you know, in that third and fourth quarter and just, just you know, dared Penn State defensively to stop them. And, yeah, that has been a surprise, Steve, that we have not been able to do that. We've got to be much more physical, like I said, up, up front and where our linebackers can make plays going to the line of scrimmage rather than making plays seven, eight yards downfield. And we've got to play smarter, too. I think when you realize, like Illinois in the second half, was running the football like that, you you sometimes have to, you know, not overplay the run, but also you have to anticipate as well. And we got to play a little bit smarter on defense as well. Okay, Jack will join us a little bit later in the show to get additional comments about the Nittany Lions and Minnesota. Freeze frame time brought to you by our good friends at State College Framing Company. Freshman quarterback Rob Bolden loads it up long and deep on offense. Derek Moy was on the receiving end of an 80 yard scoring pass. And Rob Bolden contemplates a tough day. Now the Nittany Lions get ready for Minnesota at the bank in Minneapolis. Joe's thoughts on his football team and the game. Back here, I wanted to see your reaction. Talk about Minnesota offensively with Weber and some of their weapons that they have and the challenges that they present this weekend. I know they've had kind of a tough time at times, but they're still fairly dangerous. Oh, I think they're dangerous. I think they get a fine running attack. I think they, you know, the Purdue game is a little misleading. Uh, I think I think they I think you you're right I think they they do some things very well uh, and we'll have to you know let they, their backs run tough they're hard to run tough they got a good scheme they don't make a lot of mistakes they don't put the ball on the ground uh, you know uh, carelessly I think uh, we got a tough game ahead of us. We're not going. This is not going to be an easy football game. It's going to be a tough, tough football game. And I hope, as I said earlier, I just hope we're better mentally and I and that we understand what it takes to win a tough football game. And I go back to making some plays. Got to catch the ball, and when you got a shot at it, you got to make a big catch. You got to make somebody miss. You got to. We've got to create some turnovers, takeaways. I mean, the things that make the difference, they're the things that we have to do because Minnesota is a good football, good, solid football team. They've lost to some good teams. Joe, you said you didn't make any personnel changes, but I understand that Chaz Powell's back on defense again. Is that something you felt like you had to do again? Powell came to me and talked about it. And... Uh, he wasn't playing as much offensively as I thought he might play when we moved him over to offense. Uh, so he just he asked if he could go back. I said, yeah. So he's back at corner. Coach, at the at the halfway part of the season, can you talk about uh, your quarterback and has he given you, uh, has he shown you anything that increases your confidence in him or trust in him as you head down the second half? I, you know, I don't quite get the drift of that. I, he's a true freshman. You know, and again, I keep going back to we didn't have him in the spring. I, he's everything he, that comes up is new to him. And we and, and we, we we didn't have the luxury. We don't have a luxury of the first games we played to. Exp to experiment with different things or to try different things. You know, he we've had to just kind of bring him along. I think, he, but he's getting at that stage where now he's a guy who's got to make some plays too. I mean, I think we can say okay, but he, but he's not, you know, he's, he's played enough football now 
that he's got to, to start making some things happen. And uh, hopefully he will. But I think he's done about as well as you could expect a kid. Because, you know, we haven't, regardless of what you say, you know, Iowa and Alabama are two of the better football teams on the road. And Illinois played well. I mean, the kid had a good day. The quarterback was, you know, didn't throw the ball at us and the whole bit. We got, we actually against Illinois, our problem was defense. And, you know, you guys talk offensive line, you talk this and that. Our problem was defense. Wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, when, when you're thinking about the people who you had, such as a true freshman, a quarterback, I think, you know, we had a, uh, out of tight end, which was true freshman playing tight end. You know, we lost the first two tight ends. Uh, lost our starting tackle. <laughs> you know, Eliitis. So I think that uh, that's a, that's a, a very, very uh, tough uh, evaluation of that offensive line. I don't think it's quite fair. But uh, we've got to start making some plays offensively, uh, no question about it. But e even 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 at Iowa, we had two catches. We make the two catches. We're going to at least keep us in the football game. Joe, you know, given your injuries at the safety position, I was wondering, are you considering moving Danton Lynn from corner to safety? Not really, because, you know, we, you're just starting to get in the... In, in the uh, where they're comfortable with each other. You know, the, uh, the secondary's a little bit, uh, I, I'm not so sure people quite understand how people have to react to each other back there. They gotta talk to each other, they gotta help each other with certain pass lanes, they've gotta get a feel for each other. And I would, uh, you know, uh, we, we were just starting to get, get better when we lost Nick. And rather than just start disrupting the whole business, we we're just gonna go with uh, with one of the younger kids, which, uh, and, and see what happens. But uh, we we have not uh, we have not even thought about moving the other kid. Well, we want to get our monkey because he was a great football player. Ranger's a good football player. Astorino's a football player. He really is a good football player. It will be a tough football game for us. I think every game we play is going to be tough. They'll play a tough football game. The Lions a good football team. Iowa's a good football team. When you get those kinds of things happening to you, you're going to get licked. We don't play well, we'll get licked. Find out how you can purchase episodes of the classic TV series, Joe Paterno's TV Quarterbacks, by visiting WPSU.org backslash TVQB. Penn Staters change the world every day through teaching, research, and service. It's not just the hundred student service organizations or the millions of dollars that are raised. There are individual students doing small deeds every day, one hour, one dollar, one vote, one person at a time. We are changing the world. We are Penn State. Nittany Lion fans, you can stay informed always. You can follow us on Twitter at HuddleUpLions. Time now for conference calls. We take a look around the Big Ten, brought to you by our good friends at Straw Beer. We start out with the standings in the Big Ten, and right now it tells a big story. Michigan State atop the conference standings, undefeated overall, leading the way. Iowa's right there with the neck and neck. Purdue after the win over Minnesota, also undefeated this stage, despite the fact they have a new quarterback. Let's preview the big games of the weekend. First of all, Michigan State taking on Northwestern. Michigan State undefeated right now. Quarterback Kirk Cousins is playing very well. We bring in Will Teeman from the Spartan Radio Network. How much is Kirk Cousins, Will, helped by other elements of this football team? He's in a really good spot right now because he's got a defense that doesn't put him in bad spots, helps him out at times in the offense. 
struggles. But also, he has weapons that are almost a dreamboat for a quarterback. He's got three running backs that are doing great. He has a bunch of veteran wide receivers. And to the surprise of everybody, the right side of the offensive line has really caught fire. So now up front, the blocking isn't great, but it's pretty good. In the history of Michigan State football, at least in my lifetime, pretty good blocking up front is like way, way good. And as for Northwestern, they'll really test that Michigan State defense. Quarterback Dan Purse is off to a very strong start. Iowa, big win last week against Michigan, winning by 10 points. They take on Wisconsin, should be a great test. There's no question the Iowa defense carries the day, Gary Dolphin. Gary, of course, the play-by-play -play voice of the Iowa Hawkeye Radio Network. What's been the surprise on that defense? I would say uh, the surprise of, of the season has to be at linebacker. Losing Pat Anger uh, and A.J. Eats to the NFL uh, was a big hole to fill. But Iowa has done a good job of uh, nurturing and cultivating linebackers, uh, maybe not to the degree of Penn State over the years. But this year, a guy like Tyler Nielsen has stepped up, and uh, Jeremiah Hunter has been solid. Of course, he, he's been veteran, and they've had some other guys, uh, Tarpinian and Troy Johnson, fill in nicely for the front four uh, when, when they would whiff or, or miss on a play. That should be a great ball game, Wisconsin, with all the momentum in the world after their big win over then top-ranked Ohio State Saturday night at Camp Randall, winning 28 to 18. Penn State's next home game will be against Michigan in prime time. The Wolverines, they have a bye week. The play-by-play -play voice for Michigan is Frank Beckman. And Frank, what do they want to work on on the bye week in Ann Arbor? Well, the first thing they've got to do is they've got to improve on defense. I think uh, that that's an area where Rich Rodriguez got a lot of young guys. I think he's going to take the bye week to look at some personnel changes, perhaps uh, one or two of them. He made one last week with a middle linebacker, Kenny Demons, starting for the first time. And then concentrate on cutting down turnovers. That's been a problem the last two games. They're minus seven in the turnover department. That's why they've lost back-to-back -to, -back to Michigan State and Iowa when, when all is said and done. Well, Michigan has that bye week. Other teams will play this week. Indiana plays at Illinois. The Illini in bounce back mode. Speaking of bounce back mode, well, Ohio State has to bounce back and they take on Purdue, which has great momentum after winning their first two conference game. And of course, we mentioned Michigan is the team with the bye week with two weeks to get ready for the Nittany Lions. We want to get our monkey because he was a great football player. Range is a good football player. Astorino's a football player. He really is a good football player. It will be a tough football game for us. I think every game we play is going to be tough. He'll play a tough football game. The Lions a good football team. Iowa's a good football team. When you get those kinds of things happening to you, you're going to get licked. We don't play well, we'll get licked. Find out how you can purchase episodes of the classic TV series, Joe Paterno's TV Quarterbacks, by visiting WPSU.org backslash TVQB. Time now to bring in my good friend and colleague, Mark Brennan from Fight on State. Mark, as always, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Okay, let's get to it now. Penn State 3-3 three and three, heading to the second half of the regular season. Let's start with the guys up front in the offensive line. Yeah, I think that's been one of the key problems this year, Steve. You have some new faces up there. You lose a guy like Lou Iliades. When you hear Joe Paterno saying the offensive line is not a big problem, to me, that means it is a bit of a problem. And I give him credit for that. He's not going to point fingers. But I think when your offensive line's playing well, it takes a lot of pressure off of a guy like Boulder. Uh, and I think that's really been the primary issue. They've not been able to establish a consistent running game, and that's why they're 3-3 three and three right now, part of the reason they're 3-3 three and three right now. Sometimes you do get injuries. There's no question. Every season you're going to get injuries. So when you have some, there's guys that come back in a month, maybe five weeks, but there have been so many season-ending injuries. What about the domino effect of that? Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it's not, it's, it's not one thing. It's not an ACL. You have pectorals. You have wrists. Yeah. You have all these different things. You look at the Penn State notes, 13 guys on the injured list, and at least six of those guys are out for, the, for probably the season. So it's really impacted, especially over on defense. I think you give them a bit of a pass. 
uh, just because you lose guys like, uh, you know, Suke to me is a guy losing him has just been huge. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about Suke. Five career interceptions. He had three over a two game span. It looked, Mark, like he was getting better and more comfortable at the position. Yeah, absolutely. He was the one guy to me that was emerging as a playmaker on defense. Uh, has three interceptions this year as much as the rest of the team combined. The other thing about Suke is the free safety. He's making a lot of calls back there. That, you know, they're actually fortunate that they're able to move Drew Astorino back to free safety now, a guy who's been around. But Suke, to me, had been stepping up as a playmaker, and they're definitely going to miss his presence the rest of the year. All right, let's bring in my broadcast partner, Jack Ham, one more time. Jack, when you hit a bump in the road like this, how important is it for a football team to get back to the basics and fundamentals? Well, I think fundamentally, number one, on offense, I think the mindset of finishing off drives. So we've got into a red zone area a number of times and not being able to finish off a drive. The closest we've come to having a really solid drive was the third quarter against Iowa. We came up about a half a yard short of that touchdown. I think that's number one. I think also offensively, third and short situations, the fourth down situation, we are having a hard time moving the chains when it's like third and one or two. And so a couple of times where Bolton even had to roll out to get the first down in the game against Illinois. Those are things we've got to be able to do. Be, be more physical, actually on both sides of the ball, because we're giving up 282 yards on the defensive side, coming off the ball, you know, getting off blocks, making tackles, you know, gang tackling, those kind of things. And those are the basic things that uh, I think sometimes you get away from with all these spread offenses and all the things. That I think you forget about the fact of, A, number one, you got to come off the ball and beat the man in front of you. All right, Jack. Thanks, as always. Appreciate that. Mark, moving forward, what does this football team need to do? I agree with Jack. I mean, the red zone has really been an issue. If you would have told me at the beginning of the season that through six games, Penn State was going to have nine offensive uh, touchdowns, I just wouldn't believe it. When they get down there, they have to start push punching it in. Again, I think that goes back to the offensive line being able to get it done. And this is an area where I think you could be a little bit critical of Rob Bolden because I don't think he's made some of the best decisions. He'll learn from that, though. I think he's going to get better. All right, let's talk now about the breakdown of this game. Minnesota's offense, Penn State's defense. Marquise Gray is the backup quarterback. He's also their second leading receiver. They have not run a reverse this year. They haven't run him out of the Wildcat once this year. What do you think? Well, you have a new coaching staff coming in. Maybe they'll do some trickeration. But everything, I think, goes back to Adam Weber. There's some debate there. Is he the oldest quarterback in Minneapolis or is Brett Favre? He's only been there for about 15 years. He's an outstanding quarterback, probably going to go over 10,000 career yards in, uh, in this game. Uh, you know, they have a good running game. I just don't think they're going to be able to get it going against, against Penn State. So I think the key for Penn State is zeroing in on Weber, maybe getting some pressure on him, forcing him to make mistakes. Jeff Horton, the interim head coach for Minnesota, says, look, I expect Penn State to run the football. And you can see why. They're giving up 201 a game on the ground. Well, and I think it's imperative for Penn State, as we were mentioning earlier, earlier to establish that running game. It's been the one thing uh, that they have not been able to do consistent, consistently. They go off big against Temple, then struggle the next couple games. And I really do think if they're able to do that against this team that's giving up over 200 yards per game and 32 points per game, that it will bode well for the future. And that's the odd thing about them. Minnesota has not given up a point off a takeaway turnover all year. They haven't given up. So the 32 points a game have been teams taking the ball and driving the field. Absolutely, and that's why it's key for Penn State. Listen, this team gives up points, march the ball up and down the field, get Royster, that, uh, the all-time rushing record. I think he's going to get that record this week uh, and, and get that offense in gear. I just think it's a matter of kind of breaking out and, and being able to get some things done. All right, it's ECM prediction time, and we have plenty of predictions about this week's game. Minnesota game, our boys will come out winning. 23 to 10, Penn State. I'm very excited about the Minnesota game. I have some family that'll be there, but I definitely think Penn State's gonna win. 27, 10, Penn State. You know, the offense gonna be rolling as, as Bolden get better and better, more, more uh, games under his feet. I think I'm talking about like 28, 14 out at Minnesota. I think this this you know week off that they had is, is really going to give them a chance to refocus and, and fine tune some things. And I think the younger guys are, are really going to step up this week and, and get a, hopefully get healthy. You know they've had a had a bad spell with injuries, but I think this is really going to come together for everybody this week. And I think they're going to win 2018. Hi, I'm Randy Shaw, president of Everett Cash Mutual, and I'm here to give you my prediction for Penn State's game against Minnesota this week. Adversity always reveals character and being a Penn State alumni I know the team is full of character and that's why I feel they will prove to be triumphant this week by the score of 23 to 20. 
Randy Shaw of ECM, we can't thank you and ECM enough for being an important part of this program. Well, Randy's given his prediction. Mark, every week we get yours. I agree with the gang. I, I'm going to go with Penn State 32-14. to 14. Again, I think it's a great opportunity to get the offense in gear, watch Evan Royster uh, break that all-time career uh, rushing record for Penn State, and maybe set some things up for a positive second half of the season. All right, so what do we watch for in this one? Uh, you know, we talked about the running game. What do you watch for, Rob Bolden? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I would hope that this is a game where Bolden's able to find a little bit more of a rhythm. He's really not done a great job of getting the ball into the end zone. Maybe this is the game where the running game sets something up, some things up for the passing game. So maybe you get that running game going, take some pressure off Bolden, maybe later in the game have him throw a couple TD passes and get his act in gear a little bit too. How about setting the tone early, especially with the disarray they've had in Minnesota? Absolutely. Go out. It's an early game, 11 a.m. game. Uh, punch him right in the mouth. And we've seen that. When Penn State's done that this year, when they've done well early, unfortunately they haven't done it enough. Uh, they've been able to kind of get it rolling and, and put things away. So that's imperative against the team. They're one and five, one and six, whatever they are right now. Uh, come out early, set a tone, let Minnesota know that you're there to play. Mark Brennan, as always, thanks so much for being with us. And of course, my thanks to my radio broadcast partner, Jack Cam, for joining us as well. The Nittany Lions take on Minnesota. The game will be at high noon in Minneapolis at what they call the bank, the first time Penn State's ever played there. For the entire crew, I'm Steve Jones. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone, on Huddle Up, Nittany Lion fans. Presentation of Huddle Up, Nittany Lion fans on your local public television station has been made possible in part by Everett Cash Mutual Insurance Company, insuring restaurants and other commercial businesses since 1913. ECM Insurance Group of Everett. McClanahan's Penn State Room, offering a complete assortment of Penn State gifts and apparel. Downtown State College or online anytime at pennstateroom.com. Inspirations, Milroy, Pennsylvania, featuring Penn State Corian tables and house signs. Information at 717 667-6314. This has been a production of WPSU.